the root of every crisis that a believer has is identity crisis the root of every crisis a man in Christ can ever have is identity crisis once you are able to deal with identification the light and the truth of who he is is unveiled welcome to the moment of revelational teaching with prophet dr kristen e samuel bringing to you the revelation of christ stay tuned so today i want to be sharing with you on what i started last week i titled living the supernatural someone say with me living the supernatural louder say living the supernatural every man who is a citizen of God's kingdom ought to live ought to operate in what we call the supernatural the supernatural is the lifeline of the believer the moment you have you found yourself as a citizen of this kingdom the life and the lifestyle you ought to exhibit is a life called the supernatural I mean the God we serve is a God who functions in the supernatural we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 the Bible speaking the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and then we see in, in verse 2 there was a chaotic disorder the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep we could see in God's own creation there was a chaotic disorder and the first thing we discovered God doing God was not running around God was not running helter skelter God was not looking for who to help him the first thing that God did God sent forth the force of the supernatural God sent forth the person who manifest the supernatural called the Holy Spirit we see the Holy Spirit coming to play in verse 3 the Bible says and in in verse 2 and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the deep the spirit of the lord was moving over the face of the waters that is in the face of the situation no matter how dark your situation is once you involve the holy spirit the supernatural takes over i wish i was talking to somebody here once the holy spirit comes in contact with your situation the supernatural swallows that natural occurrence i wish i was communicating so the believer ought to leave the supernatural naturally the believer ought to leave the supernatural naturally and ought to leave the natural supernaturally he ought to leave the supernatural naturally and ought to leave the natural supernatural that means he functions in two worlds he lives as a human being but beyond his natural livelihood is a spiritual life that has been gifted to him by god it's called the life of the spirit that's why jesus met a man called nicodemus in john chapter 3 verse 3 put it up on the screen for me john chapter 3 verse 3 are you blessed today john chapter 3 verse 3 man to rabbi jesus met a man called nicodemus when Nicodemus appeared to Jesus he said to Jesus you are a good teacher that was sent from from heaven by God let's look at verse 1 verse 1 verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews next verse then came Jesus then the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. It was clear. No man can do these miracles. These miracles are a proof that this man functions in the supernatural naturally. This man is not a natural person. These miracles are a proof. The proof that you are a Christian is not because you talk the word the proof that you are a Christian is because you can demonstrate God's power Paul said for the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink but in joy righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost but Paul speaking he said I've not come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the power of God 
it's not in speech if you if all you do is speaking then you have not come in contact with god's power god's power is the life of the believer that means the believer ought to demonstrate god's power and god's power is the supernatural in the believer so look at what nicodemus said to jesus no man can do these miracles these miracles does not function in natural realm except god be with him that is this man walks with god this man carries god everywhere he goes god be with him that means he doesn't carry god in just a second in a moment no he carries god everywhere he goes he walks into the store he carries god he walks into the hospital he carries god he walks into the bank he carries god everywhere he, he goes his life is a manifestation an effulgence of the glory of god why because he has cooked himself in the secret place the secret place is where the supernatural begins to flow out of a believer no man can do these miracles except god be with him now look at what jesus now explained to him look at in verse 3 look at verse 3 look at verse 3 jesus answered and said unto him verily verily truly truly i say unto you except a man be born again he shall not see partake that word see means to partake of the kingdom of god what jesus is trying to say here in essence is that these miracles that i do is because i function in another realm i function i operate in another kingdom i am from another realm i'm from another kingdom so except a man be born again now that word born again doesn't mean to be born twice it doesn't mean rebirth it's actually the greek word genau anothen genau means to be born or to bring forth anothen means above so what jesus was communicating to him was the life that i live is not a natural life the life that i live is a supernatural life and that life is from above genau anoten so except a man be brought forth from above he cannot partake the word see means he cannot partake of the kingdom of god that means as a child of the kingdom you function in the supernatural as a child of the kingdom what you and where you function in is the supernatural are you still here are you blessed today let's look at genesis chapter 2 verse 15. i want to show you something that happened in genesis the bible speaking in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 genesis 2 15 put it up on the screen that god created man in his image and in his likeness god created man and god said to man be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and have dominion now look at what god now did after he created man in genesis chapter 2 verse 15 and the lord god took the man the lord god took the man and put him in the garden of eden one to dress and to keep it now that means where man was was not where he will be right now that means god took him from somewhere is the hebrew word waikwa Waikwa means to take out from it means man was living somewhere else that was not the presence of god so god took man out of where he was and placed him in the garden of eden the garden of his presence eden means his presence so god put him in his presence one to dress it that word dress is the priestly office that god gave to man the priestly office to dress it to dress his presence that means every time man appears in his presence he becomes an intercessor he becomes a bridge he becomes a meeting point of god and man that means god can use him god can find expression through him to heal his world that means nothing can be impossible to this man to dress it is his priestly assignment so the first thing god did to man was to give him an assignment and that assignment is the assignment of a priest to dress it 
to dress it a priest so the first assignment god gave to man was to be a priest to appear in his presence to be supernatural as he is a priest is one who goes into the holies of holy and beholds the glory of god unashamed and when he comes out like moses the children of israel put a veil on their face and cover their faces his presence when a man is swallowed up with the supernatural he can walk to an unbeliever and when he says jesus is lord the unbeliever will, be, will drop down kneel down and begin to cry because he's convicted of his sin why because he's a manifestation of god on the earth he carries the power of god he carries the power of god he carries the presence of god everywhere he goes because he's a priest to dress it now look at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 are you blessed today first peter chapter 2 verse 9 shout i am blessed louder shout i am blessed first peter chapter 2 verse 9 watch this but ye are a chosen generation remember in genesis chapter 2 verse 15 god took the man god took the man that means where the man was created where the man was formed was not in his presence he was fashioned from the dust of the earth so he was like every other person he looked like every other person but when god placed him here now his dna had changed his geographical location has changed so what what happened ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a royal priesthood a holy nation so he's looking at you and he's not seeing an individual he's looking at you and he's seeing a nation you are a holy nation you individual not a holy person a holy nation that is within you is the capacity to bring forth you are not just a nation but you are a set apart nation is the greek word hagios set apart nation you are not like every other nation in the earth you are a set apart nation he looks at you and says you are a set apart nation when god speaks to a man he's not speaking to an individual he's speaking to a community so when he looks at you he's speaking to a community god appeared to rachel appeared to rebecca and said to rebecca you are carrying two nations in your womb not two children two nations in your womb not two children not two children two nations in your womb that means when god looks at you he sees capacity for growth he sees capacity for growth ye are a holy nation watch this a peculiar people why that you should show forth you should underline that word should you should that means the responsibility is on you you should but this is who you are you are a royal priesthood but until you understand the position and the placement you have you may not be able to show forth so the showing forth is a responsibility you should show forth the praises of him now praises there is not singing ah oh, no 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 it's not singing praises is not singing oh i'm just i'm just dancing no that's not what praises there is he didn't say you should show forth the singing no you show forth the praises of him that word praises there is the glory of him the manifestation of him the glory of him you show forth the glory of him who had called you who hath called you he is not going to call you he has called you it's already done you have been called you are already called you know how people say oh i, I got a calling from the lord and they think calling is to be apostle prophet pastor evangelist bishop no every believer is called that is where with that word there called you out is the greek word ecclesia 
ecclesia called out once so every believer has been called of God you are the called of God and you answer to his call you are called out out of where darkness that is where you were remember Adam was in darkness so God took Adam and brought him to his presence his presence you're going to see very soon God is light every time you experience the glory of God the presence of God all you experience is light watch this called you out of darkness into into not just light his marvelous light this light cannot be comprehended it's marvelous light that means in this light you can live the supernatural life naturally called out of darkness into his marvelous light are you here today first john chapter 5 verse 14 first john chapter 5 verse 14 just shout i live the life of god loud i say i live the life of god first john chapter 5 verse 14 first john now watch this first john chapter 5 verse 4 i'm sorry verse 4 first john chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith you see that word victory is the greek word nike <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Nike, the kind of shoes I'm wearing, right? Yeah. It's Nike, exactly. That's where they get the word from. It's a Greek word. It means victory. It means victory. Whatsoever is born of God, Nikas the world. How can a believer be afraid of a witch? You know, I come from a very dark continent and I grew up seeing the church always praying against witches with zero knowledge. They can pray for 16 hours, but the volume of their speech is against witchcraft. But when they hold the microphone to teach the word, it's emptiness. Every time they want to kill a witch, suffer not a witch to live. Who told you? You are behind the cross. You are behind the cross. Because the cross of Jesus does not kill a witch. The cross of Jesus died for the witch to experience salvation. Are, are you still here? That was Moses and his cruelty. I mean, how do you explain a man who went on Sabbath day? to pick firewood so he can cook for his children and Moses discovered that this man brought firewood went to pick firewood and Moses commanded him to be stoned to death is that the will of God God cannot be involved in such that was Moses's law that was Moses's pattern of interpreting a God that he did not fully understand but our understanding of God has been revealed in the person of Jesus Christ in the person of Jesus Christ so every time you see them killing witches pray for witches to die and before I left and even when I travel witchcraft has even multiplied there are voodoo shrines everywhere not just everywhere but voodoo shrines on the internet now on the internet on Instagram people are patronizing digital witches in Africa on life on the internet so it did not decrease rather it multiplied because of lack of knowledge because the revelation of Jesus was not revealed God Jesus was not revealed to the people look at what John is saying here 
whatsoever is born of God now of God you came out of God you are his offspring you overcome the world this system this aeon this age everything that is in the world you overcome remember in John chapter in Matthew chapter 3 and Jesus came out of the Jordan a voice announced in the heavens thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and then the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted to be tried of the devil and the first thing we see Satan brought to Jesus was if thou art the son of God his birth Satan will always try to remind you who you are in God and to make you doubt who you are in God if you are the son of God now you are hungry command these stones to become bread how can you be hungry and God says you are his son how can you be in lack and you say you are born of God Satan begins to play with your intelligence and play with your mind how can you say you are born of God and yet you are broke busted and disgusted how can you say you are born of God and nothing seems to be working how can you say you are born of God how can you say he begins to speak voices into your heart okay if you are the son of god pray like you always pray all the time and let me see money fall down here if you say you're a son of god you've been claiming it i believe i'm rich i'm rich all right command money now let me see if you are actually the son of god he begins to play with your intelligence all in the in the form to make you disbelieve what god has said about you what satan wants to do is to make you have identity crisis to disbelieve who you are in god once a believer knows who he is in god he takes his position of dominion if you are the son of god how can you be hungry you shouldn't be hungry command these stones to become bread jesus knew that he could not command that stone to become bread at that instance jesus reminded satan and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone man shall not live by bread alone that means I don't take delight in bread even though I'm hungry what can sustain my soul is the Word of God the spirit of a man will sustain his weakness the spirit of a man if my soul can take hold and eat of the Word of God then my body will go along with that world my body can be sustained by the word of God so man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded not proceed proceed that in a present continuous tense that is what man feeds on daily the word of God the word of God Satan came to challenge his identity then Satan went further in another occasion now the three the three temptation of Jesus never happened a day because the next verse says and Satan led him how can Satan lead Jesus how can Satan take Jesus on the with, with hold Jesus in the hand and say follow me that's not possible remember in the previous verse in chapter 4 verse 1 the spirit of the Lord led him and as many that are led of the spirit they are the sons of God so the spirit cannot lead you and then Satan is leading you that is a wrong translation so the three temptations never happened in the same day in another occasion Jesus found himself on a mountain after he had prayed and he was very weak on that mountain now you see if you're if you are coming down a mountain you need strength you've exhausted yourself on the mountain so you need strength to come down the mountain then the voice of Satan came if you are the son of God it is written this time he shall command his angels to take charge over you jump down and that's what Satan does do to many many believers you have high expectations you have high expectations you have declared over your life my business is prospering this year I know it I know it in the name of Jesus and here is your expectations high up there and now the outcome and the expected result is not where your expectations are so here you are a high expectation now this is what your manifestation is and Satan begins to speak to you hey why are your expectations so high jump down you can never amount to this jump down 
you said your business will earn six figures this year look at what it is at the end of 2019 2020 jump down it's not possible jump down for he shall give his angels charge over you so there is angelic help he begins to quote scriptures he begins to twist the word of god that's what the enemy does he begins to show you scriptures the lord give it the lord take it away so it was god taking away maybe god does not want you to to be prosperous you see you see you see jesus said the poor you will have amongst you don't you think you are one of the poor don't you think you are one of the poor jesus said blessed are the poor in spirit don't you think you are one of the poor he begins to twist the scripture to make you disbelieve what god never said about you are you still here put your hands together for the lord twist the scripture all in the b to make you come down from your high expectation and in order for you to come down he wants to take your life that's why many people go into depression many people go into depression many people go into isolation now you begin to invite them for fellowship they don't want to fellowship with the brethren anymore satan says hey then you see you don't need that you see i told you you don't need that you don't need to be in church you see th these things don't work just stay alone serve god by yourself you know god is in your space god is there with you he wants you to isolate yourself because in isolation he can get you he can destroy you and the angels he's talking about there he knows that even satan himself disguises himself to be an angel of light so the angels he's quoting in that scripture is not the angels of god he knows he has his own angels just in the be to thwart god's plan for your life somebody shout say i live in the supernatural louder say i live in the supernatural louder say i live the supernatural life so whatsoever is born of god overcome the world and this is the nike the victory victory there is an act of defeating an opponent an act of defeating an opponent you have defeated satan totally you are in a state of victory that's why paul said this is paul said nay in all these things we are more than conqueror you are not just a conqueror you are more than conqueror through him that loved us and gave himself for us this is the victory this is the act of defeating the opponent and the act of defeating our opponent is our faith even our faith so faith is the victory faith is the victory faith enables a man to function in the supernatural faith is the lifestyle of the supernatural faith is the lifestyle of the supernatural for we walk by faith and not by sight our walk is a walk of faith we don't live in this natural realm we don't live in this natural realm we live in the supernatural and the doctor told you you have an infirmity in your body you don't believe what the doctor said because what the doctor is saying is from the natural when i hear words that does not collide with what god has said concerning me what i do is trash that word you know many believers some pe believers come to me and say man god i had a dream and in that dream i saw myself eating and i was told by dream interpreters that is a demon feeding me in the dream and i don't know where they get get all these dream interpretation books from like several dream interpretation we are led by the spirit we are not led by dreams we are led by the spirit and then say man of god i ate in the dream so a demon has been feeding me i said because of your ignorance i said please tell that demon to visit me in my dream and give me that same food i will eat and give thanks when i wake up i will lift up my hands and say thank you lord thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil so keep bringing the food i will eat and be satisfied keep a heart have you not read that your body is the temple of the holy ghost 
your body is the temple of God now brethren present your bodies a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service my body is a sacrifice already what can the enemy do bring the food I will eat I will eat so when you have a dream that is not consistent with what God's word have said what you do when you wake up in the morning is to speak God's word and trash it you speak God's word and delete the fire that's what you do someone came to me and said man of God they chase me every night in my dream and a I see a masquerade with a whip he's chasing and running after me and he whips me he whips me and I wake up and I literally feel the pain on my back and I said you wake up you woke up like you really woke up they were chasing you and they whipped you and you woke up go to sleep my friend go back to sleep now take the whip from his hand and chase him run after him if you don't get him don't wake up don't wake up if you don't get that guy go to sleep go back to sleep and I do not permit you to wake up until you get that guy and whip him mercilessly don't pity him you woke up you woke up how dare you wake up don't wake up until you snatch the whip from his hands and whip him mercilessly how dare you run from a demon they are chasing you running after and you are running the righteous shall be bold they shall be bold as a lion they shall be bold we don't run we are not on the defensive we are on the offensive we are the one attacking all the time how can a demon attack you a witch attack you witch that is a human being that eats like you a human being that eats like you is the one attacking you a human being no you just speak a word mando ratisa paradis it destroys then they see that the authority you have is greater than the one they have they will know when you walk in the supernatural they will know it's our faith so faith is the life faith is the life faith is the life are you blessed today finally are you blessed finally i want to show you something in acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 hallelujah acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 jesus said to his disciples before he ascended to heaven he said but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power that word receive is the greek word lambano lambano means to take hold of you don't beg for it you take hold of it you shall lambano dunamis dunamis is the inherent supernatural ability of God dunamis is the inherent supernatural ability of God after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and watch this and you shall be witnesses witnesses unto me in Jerusalem you see that word witness is not one who proclaims when I looked at it in the Greek it means martyr that's where witnesses <laughs> that means one who will defend the faith even unto death in spite of the situation he will hold on to God's word you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth now let's look at chapter 2 verse 1 chapter 2 verse 1 I want to round up explaining what happened on the day of Pentecost chapter 2 verse 1 when the supernatural came when the supernatural came and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all in one accord in one place now Pentecost does not mean Holy Ghost 
You know, I meet many Pentecostal. When you ask them what is Pentecost, they say Holy Spirit. No, Pentecost is not Holy Spirit. Pentecost is actually a feast of the Jews. Pent actually is a Hebrew word which means 50. So Pentecost is actually a celebration of the Jews. It's a celebration of the Jews. But on this day of Jewish Pentecost, they were all in one accord. So 50 days after Passover, the feast of Passover, they eat Passover, what we call today the rebranded Holy Communion. It's Passover. And it must be eaten for 50 days. You know, the, what we call Holy Communion today, we eat it once in a while. No, it's 50 days every year. So, they eat it for 49 days and on the 50th day is Pentecost. Now, look at what happened on Pentecost. Verse 2. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. The supernatural came on that day. So we don't celebrate Pentecost. We remember the supernatural infilling on the day of Pentecost. So we are not just Pentecostals. We are those who have received the supernatural life of God. That's who we are. So we manifest the supernatural. We live the supernatural. And when you meet Pentecostals, all they just do is speak in tongues. That's all they do. But they are void of power. The power is not the tongues as it were. Even though speaking in tongues is good. The power is what you have received from the heavens. The power can only come when a person stays in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Power is only released. Remember, they were all in one accord. One accord. One accord. For 10 days, one accord, oneness of mind in the secret place, in the upper room. It wasn't just tongues. That's why you could see many believers speak in tongues. And yet they don't walk in love. I, am I talking to somebody here? So they call the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they say with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I beg to differ. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Even though tongues was one of the things that happened when they received the Holy Ghost. They were filled and the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. They began to speak but that is not the evidence. That is not the evidence. The evidence is love. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is not a gift called tongues. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is not prophecy. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is not working of miracles. That's why Paul speaking to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. He said, though I may speak with tongues of angels and tongues of men and I can walk miracles, I can, I can make the cripple to walk and yet I have not love. I'm a tingling Simba. So they say, speak, baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. No, tongues is not the evidence, it's not a proof that you have the Holy Ghost. Because I'm from a dark continent called Africa. And I can meet, I have met several people who are demon possessed and they speak in tongues. Even their incantation is tongues, it sounds tonguish. You will meet a voodoo priest, Mendo Rataradu Radu Radu. So we have many people speaking in tongues. That's not the evidence. Gift is not the evidence of God in a man. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. I want to show you. Are you blessed? Put your hands together for the Lord. So the evidence of the Spirit is love love is the ability for a man to walk in the supernatural 
Look at verse 22. 22. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Next verse. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no love. The fruit of the Spirit is singular, not plural. Is love, joy, peace. So the evidence that a man has contacted the supernatural is that he walks in love. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is love. Until you see a person walking in love, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit yet. He's not saved yet. Or he doesn't understand what salvation is. Or he is mentally agitated. Or he's sitting under wrong doctrine. So you see them dance. They can dance. And when they walk out of the venue, they walk in bitterness, jealousy, envy, strife, hatred. And yet, yes, God. Ah. They can dance throughout the service. When they walk out, no fruit. A fruit gift is something that was given to you. Fruit is what was planted. Except a corn of wheat falls down and dies. It abides alone. Until the believer dies. He dies to self. He dies to self. He dies to self. When he dies to self, even when you curse him out, he's quiet. He's like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and openeth not his mouth. He dies to self. Even when you take his cloth, he will give you another one. He's not selfish. Love is the way of the supernatural. Rise to your feet, people of God. For more of our messages, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook at Dr. Kristen E. Samuel, YouTube at Dr. Kristen E. Samuel, Kristen Samuel Ministries, bringing to you the revelation of Christ.